Avermedia has been making a big push to update their product line of capture cards as of late. Earlier in the year, I checked out their Live Gamer Portable 2, and we're back today with another sequel, the Live Gamer HD 2. This will be available shortly and is a nice little follow up to their popular Live Gamer HD PCIe capture card. It has a lot of cool features, though it is missing one important thing. I'm Eples Fox, here to make tech easier and more fun today, unboxing and giving a brief review and setup tutorial with the Avermedia Live Gamer HD 2. This is a PCIe 1X capture card, so this means you will need a desktop with an available PCIe slot available, and you have to put it in the, ca in, in the desktop. It's not a USB card, there's no way to hook it up with a laptop, none of that, just to get basic questions out of the way. We're going to jump to unboxing in a second, but I did want to mention that this does not include the USB record button that the original Live Gamer HD came with. I know that a lot of fans of the original card appreciated that functionality, and apparently Avermedia has gotten word from some of those people as well, and so they will be working to make it work with the newer versions of their RE Central software and the new card, if you already have one, but currently it does not come with the Live Gamer HD 2. I was kind of bummed to find that out. But theoretically, you can set that up with any, key, you know, like you can set up a hotkey to hit record with any key combination or an extra key or something like that anyway, so most people probably won't miss it. Let's jump on over to the unboxing and see what we get in the box. All right, so the box design here is actually quite nice. They've done a great job of trying to li line out what you have in the box, which by the way, does not include the USB record button. I'll touch on that in a little bit, but they've got this nice foil design to reveal the little cutout pattern on the device, and that's an actual cutout, which reveals the blue foily box. A little bit of fun there. Opening that up, and we have the cart itself, which does have that design with the cutout triangles, which is kind of neat. So when we pull the cart out here, you can see it has that nice little triangle cutout design. On the PCI bracket, we do have the HDMI out, HDMI in, audio out, audio in, and that is pretty much it. It is a PCI 1X card, no additional power required. Very sleek little design, a little bit longer than some of the other cards, a little bit bigger, uh, but nice little Avermedia logo there. Pretty slick looking card on the whole, and it should look pretty good in any, you know, gamery PC build, which is nice. Inside the box, you also get a... 3.5 millimeter audio cable to run to your microphone, audio mixer, what have you, uh, if you use that kind of setup. And then, of course, you get a fairly decently linked HDMI cable as well, which is really nice. Sometimes the included HDMI cables do not include, or they're, they're not a long enough length for many things that I'd use. They're like super short, but this one's a decent length. And then you get the info packet, which is Interesting to name it that, and then the quick guide. Let's go ahead and get this installed in my desktop. This is a cool little card. It's quite a bit bigger than the Elgato HD60 Pro, so it definitely won't fit in any sort of like low profile computer setups, but it has the same idea. Only the HD60 Pro doesn't come with analog in and output. So if you're doing any crazy 3.5 millimeter cable runs to your controller to record party chat or something like that, this is the card to go with. Now we're going to switch over to the desktop and I'm going to show you how to set up their RE Central software as well as how to set it up in OBS as there is something very specific you want to look out for when it comes to how their streaming engine works for the video codec in OBS. Otherwise, you're going to run into some issues. Once you've installed your Avermedia Live Gamer HD into your system, you need to download and install the RE Central 3 software if you wish to use it. This is from their website as usual. Link will be in the description down below. If you don't plan on using Avermedia's software, then you can skip forward a little bit, but I am going to go over it a little bit. In case you just want to do native, just normal local recordings, it's probably a good idea to familiarize yourself with their software, as it can be a little handy to just kind of grab and you don't run the risk of messing up configuration settings like you might in OBS if you're not super familiar with OBS. So they've updated their RE Central software a lot over the past couple years, and it does a pretty good job now. Now, it will automatically detect whatever Avermedia cards you have. Live Gamer HD 2, Live Gamer Portable, Extreme, and so on. Make sure you're on the right one and make sure your video signal shows up. If not, then you need to see if you have a drop-down menu if you're on, like, an older card with an analog menu. Um, and then you can adjust color, brightness, saturation, and color range. You want to leave that on standard for just about everything. That's how it's going to look for YouTube. 
If you're working for broadcast TV for some reason, you might want to choose that one, but that's otherwise don't. It'll mess up your color very badly, and most video editors don't like it. So the big things to look out for, making sure you're on HDMI if you have other options, and choosing the correct audio device. Your game sound is what this basically refers to, or if you're using the 3.5 millimeter analog audio inputs on the card, then you need to choose that. So line is the analog, the 3.5 millimeter. So if you're running from a, your game controller, you run your game sound through there, or a headset or something, you'd want to use line. If it's running through the HDMI cable, digital audio interface. That's what you need to choose. And then you can set it up to pick up your system audio and things like that, and a microphone and such if you want to do live commentary. Not 100% necessary. Now, if you go to the little settings cog here, you can update the software. You can set your save location, which is kind of important to update your language. Choose which, what microphone you might use for uh, live commentary, and then you can tell it to save as a separate MP3 file, which is handy. Some people like that. You can test your microphone. Set up social media accounts to automatically like tweet clips out and things like that. Media Share allows you to view recorded clips with the software, assuming you haven't moved them out of the folder, which is kind of nice if you need to edit them. A double click will open up in a media player. You get a nice little view here, and then you can share them out. And then, of course, your record button is back where we were for capturing and streaming. You will want to change around your recording quality. By default, it's on some you know default settings that aren't necessarily the best. If you click the pencil icon next to that, you can choose what bit... Well, actually, this is the title section. You can choose what file format. For most people, MP4 may be the only one available and pretty much the only one you want to use. Resolution, 1920 by 1080, 1280. You have a lot of options. Obviously, for max quality from a normal console, 1920 by 1080. Keyframe. If you plan on doing anything with YouTube or Twitch, two seconds. H.264 profile, if you want the best quality, high. If you need to optimize for a lower end system, you can mess around with main or baseline, but you will have to lower the bit rate here. Now, by default, it's set to like 20 megabit per second. In this software, this uses their compre this This card has two video streams running at once, basically. In their software, it uses the compressed stream, and the most bit rate you can get out of it is 60 megabits per second. This is plenty. This is the same as the HD60 Pro. Plenty of bitrate, more than most people will ever need for YouTube, but you can go higher in OBS, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then you can choose your refresh rate. 60 for 60 FPS, obviously. If you need to record lower, you have options. Pretty much most people should be doing 60. And then audio bitrate, you can only go up to 256, unfortunately. I wish you could do 320. You don't have that option. And then once you're done, hit plus to save your profile and hit save and close. Now you also have the choice of the def of the H.264 codec. And then if you have an NVIDIA graphics card in your system, you can use the NVIDIA codec, which records much higher quality at high bit rates and puts zero impact on your system. It uses the graphics card and therefore puts zero CPU like usage impact on your system, which is nice. And then you can give your game genre or whatever to help you easily identify your recorded files. Once you're ready to go, hit start recording. It switches to recording mode, takes a second, which is a little annoying IMO, but whatever. And you're recording. Then you can save out screenshots and the like. If you need to hear the game sound back through your computer for whatever reason, this speaker does that. It plays the sound out back through your computer. I keep it muted because that gets distracting as can be. And then, of course, hit stop recording when you're done. You can full screen it. Keep in mind, though, that despite the fact that it is, you know, super, super low latency, you're still going to not probably be able to play off of this. So, like, that's just not how it works. There's always enough, like, even two extra millisecond of input lag or whatever can cause problems for precision games like shooters. Stop recording when I'm done. Now, you can stream through the software as well. You can choose a streaming pro blah, 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 platform. Twitch, Ustream, YouTube, Nico, Nico, Hitbox, Facebook, Livehouse.in or a custom server if you need to stream to a platform not listed here. I don't really mess with streaming from this because it's going to be super basic. You can set up scenes, kind of like I've got a software, but IMO, it's not super up to date yet. I, I'm not using this, but you do have that option. Now, if you don't want to install their software or you specifically want to configure it in OBS, we are going to open up OBS Studio. Now, for me, it works with 64-bit, but if you are having troubles getting, you know, getting it working, try OBS Studio 32-bit instead. I've heard that it can fix a little bit of compatibility. And if you only plan on using OBS or Wirecast or a third-party client of some sort, then you don't need to install the RE Central software at all. So I'm going to make a new scene here, and we'll go through the options you have. I'll call this Avermedia Test for Tut. 
That way I know to throw it away later. So I've already added. So if you if you need to add the live gamer HD, you add a source video capture device and then you give it a name. I've already named it and given, you know, added it here, live gamer HD2, whatever. Click okay. And then it will automatically open up if you're adding a new source. The properties here. So you have multiple devices you can choose from and it is it is very important that you choose this specific one. If you're using, you know, OBS or whatever, Avermedia LG HD Stream Engine Dash 1. If you do normal Live Gamer HD 2, you will actually end up with a little bit of desync and just, uh, you know, latency and it's going to be more compressed. The That's the compressed video stream that their software uses. The version you want is the uncompressed, which is the stream engine. So make sure you have that selected first and foremost. Then choose your resolution and frame rate, presumably 1920 by 1080, 60 FPS. And then down here, you need to check. Use custom audio device. That needs to be checked. And then that also needs to be audio stream engine. Again, not the normal, uh, where is it down here? Not the normal Avermedia Live Gamer HD2. Because you do have the option between the digital interface, which again is the audio over the HDMI cable, or the line, which is the analog 3.5 millimeter input. You can still choose either of those, but it needs to say audio stream engine. If you just do line Avermedia Live Gamer HD2 or somewhere digital audio interface, those will be completely out of sync with your video. I had to send them a really mean email saying, yo, what's up with this? And they were like, why didn't you choose this option? Because I'm a dummy. So if you choose that, audio will be in sync, it'll be the right audio, and so on. So you have digital audio interface if you're using the HDMI cable, line if you're using the analog input. Pretty much all the defaults are fine, and you're good to go. Obviously, set up your OBS settings as you would like. I have plenty of tutorials on my channel, more coming soon, yada yada. But then you're ready to play your game. It's, it's all ready to go. And that's it. Quality looks great. It looks phenomenal. I can pull up to like a gigabit per second video bitrate out of this capture card. Looks great. Super low latency. Everything syncs up with my webcams and things like that and all of my uh, other views here. I have a lot of scenes set up and things like that. Looks great and works great for me. And that's it. Just make sure you have the right streaming engine set and you can get some really good quality recordings out of this. Again, in software, in their software, it uses the MJPEG codec and records to max of 60 megabits per second, which is more than enough for most people. Most people make fun of me for even using that. But if you switch over to the streaming engine in a third party program like OBS Studio, you can you get uncompressed access. So you can get roughly up to 1.4 gigabit per second recordings, which is pretty cool. I did also want to mention that this card is driverless. You do not have to install their RE central software to use it. On everything except for Windows 7, it automatically gets detected and you do not need to install any drivers. If you're using Windows 7, you do need to install special drivers. And they're even saying that it's, it might be Linux capable, although they're still running tests. If I get to it, I will run my own tests for Linux because that is something I'm probably going to get a lot of questions about. But overall, it integrates perfectly with OBS Studio as long as you use the right streaming engine. And it looks great, latency free. I'm quite happy with it and it has a nice little glow in my computer case that adds to the overall visual flair of using the device. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and overview and review and setup tutorial and everything I tried to cram into this video. If you enjoyed it, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos, come follow me on Twitch if you're interested in my game streaming. I have been streaming using this card for a couple weeks now um, and I'll see you in the next video.